a lot of volatility out in the world right now, a lot of possibilities. It seems like the, the mantra of this legislative session is let's wait and see. Let's wait for the federal government to make their move, then we'll deal with it after. Right. Um, when you look at the best possible scenario that could happen over the next year that you're going to be dealing with next year, what does that best possible scenario look like? Well, I actually think that the best possible scenario is that the Republican majority can't figure out how to repeal the Affordable Care Act and the health care exchange is left intact so that families continue to have access to health care. We know that there's what, $220 million in money that flows into the state of Idaho from the Affordable Health Care Act in terms of subsidies for people to buy insurance. And so our best case scenario is that uh, the lack of vision that I see coming from Washington results in inaction. So just basically status quo remains due to incompetence. Now, certainly there are some things that could be done to kind of uh, help the state of Idaho um, pursue its economic uh, vision but I'm not sure that what they're proposing will help Idaho um, significantly, especially if you think about how much Idaho receives in federal dollars. Uh, our dependence on the federal government is substantial. So if they start to slash taxes and they start to cut with uh, reckless abandon, Idaho is likely one of the states that uh, really is hurt by that as they also have to cut budgets on the backside. And we're, if, if we assume status quo r remains, no drastic uh, slashing of taxes. But we do hear a lot of talk of taking strings away from some of that federal money that comes in, sure. whether it be education or sure. Medicaid or welfare. Sure. Does that set up a better um, paradigm for Idaho to maneuver within the budgets that we have, assuming we're getting about the same amount of money? You know, most of the strings that come basically try to apply a level of uniformity across the states. And so when they talk about we want Medicaid and a block grant so the state can do what it wants with that money, that's kind of code for we want to be able to say we're going to charge you and if you don't make your payment because of another financial hardship, we're going to take it away from you. Um, kind of like the carrot and the stick model. And there's some truism to that, but there's also a lot of room for Idaho to really exert a um, hand of government that I would not consider the lightest hand of government for poor people um, and middle class people. And so there's a lot to be said for the value of the flexibility of block grants. But um, in states like Idaho, where we also have some ideological challenges, we could actually end up using those block grants to um, not discriminate, but challenge who's able to access services. And so in this, this best case scenario yeah. that we're talking about, what, what does Idaho look like two years from now? Well, I hope that we continue to grow. And I think I sit on the Economic Outlook uh, and, and Revenue Assessment Committee. And I think that we continue to see growth that is responsible and that is maintainable. So 4%, 4.5% growth would be great. And if we do that, then eventually we come around to this conversation of how do we close the gap? How do we make sure that our higher education institutions are fully funded? And I think there's resources to do that in a perfect world. Um, it's potential changes that changes how many resources we get from the federal government that is a little bit nerve wracking. And those changes that you're, you're talking about that we, we need to talk about, Yeah. Do, does that happen this year? Does that happen next year? Or when do those conversations start? That's such a great question because here's the thing, the, the comments that President Trump has already started directing toward Mexico are particularly disconcerting given how much of U.S. agriculture, not just Idaho, but U.S. agriculture is dependent upon the Mexican market, whether it's wheat, beef, all kinds of exports to Mexico. And when you start a trade war and you start threatening to destabilize another country's monetary policy, you really run the risk of weakening agricultural exports, which is going to hurt our rural communities the most. But when you talk about how that impacts our general fund, it's substantial. And so couple that with this idea that we're going to attach a 20% tariff on avocados flowing across the Mexican border. Now you've really created a problem because you've raised grocery prices and you've driven down exports simultaneously, all in the name of protectionism. Idaho is likely to really struggle in that type of an environment. And talking about Mexico, we, he's also talked about China. He's talked about NAFTA. I mean, are 
three biggest trading partners are Mexico, Canada, and China. Yeah. Which I guess brings us to the flip side of this conversation. What's the worst possible scenario that we see over the next two years? I don't really like to think about the worst possible scenario. I hope the best for this administration. I want this administration to succeed largely because I love my community and I love my state and I think it's dependent upon their success uh, for our community to continue to grow. But worst case scenario is a significant marginalization of those populations that uh, Trump appears to dislike or disagree with. And that could be everyone from the LGBTQ community all the way through our immigrant workforce and our refugees. And we know that the refugee process of bringing uh, folks fleeing countries to the United States has really helped grow our diversity and grow our economy. So on the social side, I could see President Trump really damaging and further marginalizing populations that at this time I don't see are deserving of what his current actions are. On the economic side, if he slashes taxes like he says he's going to, and then Congress fails to reciprocate that with cutting budgets dramatically, he's going to drive our debt and our deficit through the roof, which then in turn will cause other economic calamities, basically. Not to mention that trade wars are a really good way to destabilize our country and the European Union and other places. So as Donald Trump our president really begins to talk about what he wants to accomplish. We know that protectionism didn't work in the past. It's not probably going to work this time. And we also know that trickle-down economics probably didn't work in the past, and I doubt that it will work this time. So we run the risk of really creating a global recession unless he treads a little lighter on what I think is already thin ice. And how does Idaho deal with that? Do we see kind of what we saw over the last eight years where we cut down to the very essential services or do we have to look at raising taxes or do we have to look at just giving up on some services? I think that Idaho, because we would be considered super dependent upon the United States of America and uh, the federal dollars that are returned to our state, I do not think that Idaho weathers a full-scale recession very well if it involves a slashing of federal budgets. I actually think that it probably damages us and other states in the South with the same low GDP significantly. And that really worries me because in addition to uh, the agricultural community, we also have all of the non-farm labor, which a majority of Idahoans do. And if our agricultural community is suffering and our prices go up, we start laying people off real quick. And once that happens, Idaho, I just don't see as having the resources to maintain its current bare bones, as you said, bare bones education system. I don't see us being able to take on the responsibilities of health care at the state level. And so I think it puts the burden on communities so unfairly that it could be a real problem. So what, what can the state legislature be doing this year, next year, in order to prepare for this possible scenario? Well, first of all, I don't want to prepare for that possible scenario. I mean, it's good that we think about it, and I think that this speculative conversation is interesting, but um, the legislature should be putting money in the bank. Above all things, we should be putting money in the bank, and not just because of a President Trump, but because we know that recessions come and go. We don't know when they're going to come necessarily. There might be predicting or indicators that are going to go with it. But we know that a recession is going to come, and we currently have less money in savings than we did in 2008 when the last recession started. And my opinion and the opinion of many other electeds is that we need more than we had in 2008. So let's get $600 million in our rainy day funds. Not to mention, we need to continue to really fund our education system so that if we do go through a recession, they're not in a worse position um, coming out of it. What we would hope is that when we go through a recession, we're able to hold neutral and then build again when we get out of it, which has not happened in Idaho. Generally, Idaho does not weather recessions well, and we have to slash a lot of budgets in almost draconian ways. So if we go through this worst-case scenario, what does Idaho look like two years from now? I think that our conversations are, are about uh, the career ladder, but it's from a much different perspective. I think our conversations about the economy are from a much different perspective. The last thing you want to do in a budget shortfall because during the good years you decided to use uh, inconsistent methods for creating your, your economy, i.e. 
the economy is doing great, we don't have enough money in savings, let's cut taxes, let's not have a plan for how we're going to utilize that. Then when you roll into a recession, the last thing you want to do is have a conversation about raising taxes on people who are unemployed. So the only option that's left is to cut and cut and cut and cut. And that's a huge concern for those of us that worry about a recession. And so that's why in the good times we're pretty reluctant to uh, support things that appear to be um, not well thought out. No, let's, let's just look at our, our actual crystal ball rather than our best and worst case scenarios. Uh, what do you see happening over the next two years? You know, I think it's probably a combination of the both, both of that. I do think that in the next two years, from a civil rights perspective, we are probably going to go backwards. Um, Idaho already doesn't, uh, hasn't updated the Human Rights Act. We already have um, issues with whether or not we can charge with hate crimes in Idaho. The feds had to come in and do it recently because our malicious harassment uh, statutes aren't up to par. And so I think on a human rights side, Idaho regardless of what happens in the next four years economically, Idaho has trouble progressing and that worries me for those folks that I believe are marginalized and deserve better support from their communities. Uh, economically, it's really hard to say. You don't want to get into a, a crystal ball piece. I do think that the next year we continue to see economic growth. We have a good 2018 or 2017-18, um, but I think that the worries we have with Trump really engaging Mexico and other countries in ways that do not appear to be productive will really harm our economy. And I think that Americans really need to recognize and Idahoans really need to recognize how interconnected we are with China and Mexico and Japan and know that that's critical to our economy and particularly our exports. And right now in the, the state house, it seems like people are taking a very much a wait and see tact. I, I think the only kind of push we've seen is a little bit from, from your body of some tax cuts. Not, not a whole lot of movement on transportation, yeah. not a whole yeah. lot of movement on yeah. kind of some of these larger issues. Is, is that the right way to go? Is the right way to go kind of wait and see? I, I actually think that it is a wait and see. Um, so much of what we decide is dependent upon what the feds are deciding to do that it's really hard for us to move forward with, with policies when we don't know if uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is going to have the same role moving forward. We don't know if the Department of Education is going to be funding many of the programs we have in Idaho in the same level. Uh, we just, we, we know that there's such a change at the Department of Housing and Urban Development that from an affordable housing perspective there's going to be changes. So for us to make any real massive decisions right now would probably be a little bit too soon. I do believe we'll have a busy year next year, though. And two years from now, what should the average Idaho citizen expect? What, what, what environment are they going to wake up to February oh, yeah. of 2018? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I am not a doomsdayer. I believe that the strength of our... Uh, institutions will prevail regardless of who the president is um, and I believe that we have one of the longest running economic uh, recoveries in the history of the United States and so I hope that continues I hope our economic recovery continues another 10 years but we know that that would be we're already out of the the general mean for an economic recovery so it's it's tough to speculate. If, if we continue to see growth, I think that Idaho's in a great place. I think if we see a major retraction in our economy, whether it be because our exports fall apart or our commodity prices fall apart, and then other things start to kind of chain react to that, we could wake up in 2018 and have a much difficult, much more difficult environment. If I went over to the, the state house and polled all of the legislators over there, even some folks in the administration, maybe even the judiciary, and asked them, what's, what's the vision for Idaho? Do you think I'd get any consensus? I would be surprised if you got a consensus on that. Um, I do think that there is one really consistent vision within the legislature right now, and that is the career ladder. And if there's props that I could give to the governor, it's basically that he is investing in a higher education task force with the hope of coming up with a strategic vision there, and this workforce development task force. I just really wish he would have done that in 2010 not in the last two years of his governorship. So it's unfortunate that he's chosen to take this path so late, but I'm glad that he's at least taking the steps. 
you know, I've heard a lot of people, and this, this will be my last thing, so we can get you back over there. But I, I've heard a lot of people kind of looking at the, the task force recommendations on the education and some of these other task forces and this long-term planning as this got a vision, this got people behind it, this is the way to move forward. Yeah. And yet I don't hear a lot of people wanting to plan for the future right now. Are, are we kind of falling back and making the same mistakes that we used to when we have this great example of this worked? with the uh, task force recommendation. Yeah. Well, so I would refute that and say if we go with a higher ed task force that really comes out with a plan that we can get people behind, then we could develop a long-term strategic vision for higher ed. Um, the workforce development one is a little bit more nuanced to me because if you start looking at areas of Idaho that really need workforce development, it probably comes back to higher education. And so I'm not sure the overlap there. Um, but when you build a strategic plan and you get all different ideologies on the same page moving forward, there's going to be compromise, and that takes a while to, to, to do. Um, what's unfortunate is in 2011, 2012, these years when if Idaho was really preparing for a future, that's when we should have been strategic planning. Now we are at a place where there doesn't really appear to be a strategic plan beyond the career ladder, um, but we're starting some. Those will take a while. And I guess really finally, all right, is Idaho on the right, right track? You know, I've said it once, I've said it before, I'm not 100% sure what track we're on all the time. Um, I don't think we're on the right track in terms of really supporting rural communities in Idaho. Um, and I struggle to see that we're on the right track with giving local urban jurisdictions the needs that they also have. And so, um, there are rural counties in Idaho that continue to see an overall retraction even as our economy gets better, which means they're getting smaller. And we have urban areas in Idaho that just simply can't pass a levy or a bond or some of the things that they need to be able to continue to serve their communities. And so we're not on the right track, although this is such a great place to live. And those are two very different things. Yeah, thanks a lot.